to go kill each other. Uh, you know, the real man's game. They could promote it. PH could put them to sleep. Number five, we could operate a lottery with no exemptions. That lottery. Present the notion, the implications projected by a group of folks that than anyone else and were justified in using the earth to the march. Is it all about the herb? Yes. Fight, yes, fight like how you make righteousness and justice the rule of the day on earth. Day. Not to sound cliche, we must all depend on God to push through the positive changes. That's it, man. I mean, we can be his foot soldiers, but you know what? We've got to have detached kind of coolness and just say, God, when the time is right in history, you're going to put your foot down and you're going to, you know, through your grace, you're going to, you're going to really, you're going to show the evildoers who's boss. You're going to do it. It's going to happen in a very tangible, real way. God is going to take over this planet and the affairs of men. The good guy is going to win this thing. It'd be an unreadable book, an unwatchable movie if he didn't. He, she, they, like the first chapter of Genesis points out, the God, the creator God Almighty uh, is two. It's male and female, and it's one. Okay, it's not inconsistent. It's just the way God chooses to be, the nature of God. That's why, you know, men and women, they want, they crave each other's uh, companionship so much. It's very natural. Once utter lawlessness, a.k.a. anarchy, rears its ugly head as it has done for a very long time in America, it's very hard to tell anyone where to draw the line. It becomes a dog-eat-dog, -dog, endless, worsening, social Darwinian paradigm of death and destruction. That's it, man. You know, once you say, well, it's okay that we have inequality over here or there, and that, you know, as long as you're not affected by it, right? You, you know, it's easy to divorce yourself from it. You, um, you know, you think it's okay, but um, remember, you lose all your standing. So I'm a big prescriber in egalitarian principles. Just believe in equality for everybody. Freedom, utter, absolute freedom across the board. No exceptions, no conditions, end of story, man. That's what you believe in that, and I believe your heart is pure, and you will be able to stand with a clear conscience before God someday that you're willing to everybody be set free and come hell or high water, you know, come what will, come what may, you know, let the chips fall where they will. And if people all want to be lazy, that's tough. That's the way it is. It's not going to happen because that's not our instinct. We have an instinct that when the, you know, the earth and everything in it, the wealth and prosperity is handed to us on a silver platter from birth, the instinct is to give back and to use our God-given talents to serve one another in some capacity, okay? To get along, to be content, to be at peace, okay? Peace, prosperity, freedom, security, all those good things. We all want the same things, basically, at the end of the day. So it's not hard to figure out that all the things you want for you and your family, okay, isn't it all those things? You've got to want for everybody. And if you don't, then you're evil. So it's easy to check yourself and determine, you know, decide where you're going and know where you're going from here. Okay, that's it. You can know whether you're going to heaven or hell. If you turn to God and say, God, you know what? Make sure that I'm straight, man. I'm a straight arrow and a pure, I have a pure heart. I want to be right in your sight. I want to be a fragrant aroma in your metaphorical nostrils, not a pungent stench. And it's not hard to do that. We can all do it. So we're all without excuse for not choosing to do it. People must stop BSing themselves about utter ubiquitous social, political, and economic failure. The sooner we admit that irrefutable, inarguable fact, the sooner we can fix our desperate state of existence. In my educated assessment, whether one is a mini or me, maxi elitist, both are on an identical highway to hell. I love life. As such, by default, I hate death. Strictly 
evidentiary evidentiarily speaking, Americans have been so roundly, so successfully dumbed down, confused, and ignorant of basic economic reality that I seriously wonder if they understand the fiscal difference between renting and owning. Yeah, I mean, it is a big difference, okay, a big difference. But, you know, the housing is a prime example of that. I mean, we could own all those houses. You know, why don't we be the landlord for that Section 8 housing? Okay, why don't we, the people, buy those houses for those people, and we'll be the recipients. If and when they can afford to pay the cost, the real cost of buying that property and building those houses, okay? Do you understand? I mean, what is wrong with us, folks? God almighty, people call themselves conservatives. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? I don't care how liberal that idea sounds. It's fiscally prudent. It's fiscally conservative. Get it through your head, man. I don't care how liberal a basic income sounds. It's fiscally conservative. It's fiscally prudent. I know what I'm talking about. It's the difference between renting and owning, man. So we're renting our parking spaces when you got to pay a meter as opposed to owning it. No, why don't we, the people, buy it? It's already public property, and then they're charging the public to... Who? Where is the money going to? They're, oh, well, it's making these jobs. We're creating... Good. Why don't I go out there and I'll go put up some meters on your in your driveway in front of your house? It's a public highway. It's a public road, and it'll profit me. It's creating a job for me. I get to go and collect the coins out of the meter, the dollar bills. Maybe I'll just make you pay a flat rate, five bucks a day, to park in front of your street. Okay? You don't like that? Well, tough. I'm the government. The only legitimate government is we the people. Take that, you chamber of communists. Stop making people pay for parking. They're doing it again here in Chico. They're gonna, now this public park, the Bidwell Park, it's huge here in Chico. They're going to make people pay to go park there. Also, well, it'll fund this service and that, don't you? It's a good, so they got people convinced that debasing your currency, raising your cost of living tax is a good thing. Well, to them, it, it's going to benefit them. They, well, we got to pay to park there, too, even though we work for this agency that, that benefits from the taxes. So they've insulated themselves. Do you understand how this works? It's like these politicos giving themselves raises for doing an abysmal job insulating themselves effectively while they debase your currency through raising your cost of living through your taxes. Cost of living tax, tax, all the same thing. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it doesn't matter if your taxes are being paid to a private entity or a government entity. It feels the same. Okay, it's identical. The effect on your currency, you deworthment of your currency, debasement of your currency, it raises your cost of living tax, stuff you can't get away from, you have to pay, okay, you have to, by law, that's it, see what happens when you don't pay a parking meter, you get a ticket, then you have to pay more, you're punished, you're penalized, do you understand? And again, it's like a, the difference between people to understand this, socially, economically, socioeconomically speaking, it's the difference between somebody getting picked by a print if you're a rich person that, gets a, that has to pay a meter or gets a parking ticket or, or a desperately poor person that has to pay it. It's the difference between getting pricked by a little pin or having a freaking spike jab through your arm. Do you understand? That's what it's a very good allegory, very good analogy, very good metaphor for how it feels to help you understand. This, this rigged game of Monopoly, I can't pay the rent. I'm out. And the landlord, I don't care. I got people waiting in line. In fact, I'm going to raise the rent even more. Uh, that's it. I'm going to do some improvements on the place, and I'm going to make the tenants pay, and I'm going to go buy some new properties. I got to jack up the rents. I got a bigger mortgage. I had to pay more for the house. Do you understand how this works, how it's passed on? And people say, well, I don't even take Section 8. Don't blame me for those hype. The industry... Okay, the industry is propped up by Section 8. That $50 billion a year makes a big... Take it away and see what happens to rental costs. Take it away. God, I implore Trump. Take it away. Shut down the program. Even if all those people end up homeless, I don't care. Oh, well, you don't care. No. I don't believe in exclusive privilege for anybody. No. Let's all go together. If we all got to die out in the cold, let's all do it together. Show solidarity here. Buck the trend and fix the damn problems. You take that 50 billion year and buy people houses. Damn it, put the military to work. Building the houses. A lot of the homeless are veterans. Damn it, fix it. I'm tired of this, man. Fix it. I'm tired. I'm so I'm, I lose my cool sometimes, but I'm so 
55 years since I was a little boy, I've had to watch this unfold. And I'm done, man. I'm cooked. I've had it with all you liars, okay, because I know you're not that stupid. Nobody's that stupid. You're without excuse. You're being intellectually dishonest if you disagree with me. It's as simple as that. Cut and dried, man. You're on the highway to hell. If you don't agree with the things I'm saying, I make sense. I know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm very well studied. And most of it's because I learned on my own. Yes, I've been to college the whole nine yards, okay. I don't give a crap. It's what you learn, what you decide to learn on your own about stuff. You make it clear as a light of day. You learn the nuts and bolts, the why and wherefore, for the logic. You know capitalism inside and out. You know what's supposed to happen under capitalism, supply and demand, free market, competition, risk, all that kind of crap, market corrections. You learn all about that. You learn about every nation's single greatest asset. And then you, too, are going to get angry and pissed off and say, I'm tired, man. You weary me, you liars, you stinking liars. You're just sick of fans and just, you, you're, you're just afraid your own self-interest are at stake by changing your beliefs. You're filled with pride. You're freaking evil or you're on the highway to hell, man. I'm not talking to people that agree with me. I'm talking to those that don't agree because I'm, I'm warning you, man. You are, you're cooked. You might be dead today. It might be the last day on earth you have this little window of opportunity to change your mind about being evil. Jump and ship. It's that quote, my life is more important, more valuable than other lives, quote, end quote, attitude that repulses me. Whether one chooses to be an elitist, big or small, maxi or mini, is repugnant, and they are all on the highway to hell. Dollars to dog turds, I'd bet that the primary driver for mass immigration to the United States is because the United States is somehow responsible for meddling in the social, political, and economic affairs of the na countries people are escaping. So what better destination than the guilty nation, the source of oppression, to migrate to? While many so-called Americans oppose gun rights, Second Amendment rights, as they stand, Evidently, not a single one will stand up and admit they are utterly disarmed at their own private homes. Right? They don't like that. They enjoy the benefits. They're sponging off the Second Amendment. They enjoy the whole world not knowing that they're not armed to the teeth. That's the benefit we all share as Americans with our Second Amendment rights. Even if you hate firearms, it doesn't matter. It, you understand? You are a beneficiary, and nobody that's unarmed at home is going to tell the world that they're unarmed at home, right? So you might hate firearms and just have nothing to do with them, but you know, and deep down in your heart, you're a beneficiary of the Second Amendment. <laughs> if we, as so-called civil, as a so-called civilized society, can admit that currency debasement, deworthment, through cost of living inflation or tax increases, either one, same thing, um, is obviously a bad thing that you want the opposite. Then equally obviously, increasing the worth of your currency through deflation, cost of living decrease, is indeed a good thing. We can work in that direction if we can admit that. The question becomes, who will start the ball rolling, and where will it stop? Well, that's it, man. I mean, you know, if we could work in the opposite direction of increasing insecurity, financial insecurity, uh, incre and decreased freedom, finan decreased financial freedom, so we gradually could work that. If we could do that, it would be such a beautiful thing. I would shut the hell up. Believe me, tomorrow I'll never make another video. If I just see, give me an appreciable amount of time, so I say, okay, God's will is finally being done. We've turned the page. We, we, you know, the ship has turned, the worm has turned, whatever analogy you want to use. But we're on a new trajectory that God is in control of, and we're going to turn this ship around, and it's you know, everything's coming up roses, man. I'll shut the hell up. Believe me, that's all I want to see. I, I just give us an appreciable amount of time, and I want to know that we're never going the other way again. Uh, I'll be happy. I'll be a happy camper gradually slowly increasing our sense of financial freedom gradually slowly increasing our sense of financial security through prosperity okay that's all i want that's all i'm asking for that's the only that's progress man that's all that i really want to see man i want that for everybody your family my family